Hello, youth. Hello, you fellow gangsters. Like, maybe just move that up a little bit. It's gotta be good. Hello, my fellow gangsters. So we're gonna do a whole bunch of UI stuff to make like little tanks kind of game. And so we'll do like uh, buttons that you can press and actually hold to make the tank move left and right, not just click. And a slider to aim. And we'll do like UI, like little health bars. And we'll have it so you can enter in your name and it will like carry that text over onto the next scene and put it on the players and stuff like that. And just like a bunch of just UI things. So I'm in Unity 5.3.6 and I'm just going to create a brand new 2D, 2D project because it's going to be 2D stuff. I'm just calling it Hippie Tanks. Alright, so make sure you're in 2D mode. And let's go into the hierarchy window, create UI image. And the image is going to be like way, well, it's not even centered. I'm just going to click to reset it. But see, this canvas thing gets made, and that's like way bigger than the actual like game view area, but it overlays on top of the game view area. Anyway, so got like this image. And if you're using this tool, you can like just resize it and things like that. It's got this center point thing. So if you were to have it in that corner and you rotate it, that's like what it's rotating around. And right here, there's this rect transform. If you click on this, and there's all the different things. If you hold Alt, so if I was to click in the top right, it's like I guess moving his anchor points to the top right, but if you're holding Alt and press that, it actually moves in there, and if you're holding Shift, it moves his little center point thing there. So if I hold Shift and I can like center it, things like that. So like usually I hold Alt and Shift and like move it where I want, and these anchors, if I go to my screen view and it's in free aspect, you can see it's like anchored to the top right. So it's like attached to the top right, basically. And so for this image, I'm just going to like click on this thing, go Alt, Shift, center it. And you can see in free aspect that like your window view, as you change it, it just like stays centered. If you go, if you click on the canvas here, they have constant pixel size and I'm going to click on that and go scale with screen and then on this match width or height I'm just going to go expand so now if I resize it it kind of like scales pretty good with the screen and then we want to do 16 by 9 that's like a pretty normal size so I'm going to put it 16 by 9 and actually for this image I'm going to do the bottom right thing. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift and click on the bottom right one. And now it will actually, if I go back to this free aspect, you can see it just scales with whatever the shape of the screen is and like stretches itself. But I'm going to keep it in 16 by 9. So I'm just going to do that for like a background kind of color and click on the color and just make it whatever, some kind of background shade of color that you want. So let's first add an exit button. So if on the canvas I'm going to go create UI button. And I'm just going to rename that to button exit and click on this thing and then align it and move it and everything. Alt shift and then click on the top right. And because I want it to be anchored to the top right. And I'm going to make the width about a hundred by a hundred and I'm gonna move the position to like minus 10 and minus 10 for the Y as well and on the text in it I'm just gonna make it like an X change it so that it can overflow horizontally and vertically and just kinda make it big just a cheap little X button and on the button so like this alignment thing, 
this guy here, you can also, so like right now if he scales, he's going to scale like that, but if it was aligned in the center and you were to scale it, it would scale like from the center, like if it was animating or something. But you can also move that, it's the pivot point here, so 0 0.5 is the center. So on here, 0 x would be the top, like 0 x would be the left, and 0 y would be the top, and then 1 would be, like 1 for both of those would be the bottom right. So I'm going to make them 0 0.5 to make it like centered. Because I want to make it animate later so that when you mouse over it, it will like shrink and grow. And I don't want it to do that from the top right corner. I want it to do that from the center. And another thing that you might notice is if you have these in a different order, like if the image was right here, now the image is in front of it. You can see sticking out there. So that's the order that things render. The bottom stuff renders in front. So you want to keep things in a good order. And another thing that you can do or another thing you should know is that you can slice images so that they scale nicely. So I'm going to use Affinity Designer. I'm going to put a link under this video right now. It's a free beta. And if you have some other art program, you can just use whatever art program. It doesn't matter. But I like Affinity Designer because it's free right now at the time that I'm recording this. I think in the future it will probably be like 30 bucks or something. But whatever art program you use, just go uh, make a 512 by 512 and make sure you have a transparent background. And if you're using Affinity Designer, I'm definitely not an artist, so if you're an artist, totally skip this part. But we just want to make like a rounded image. So they got like these shapes here. And I'm just going to make like basically a window thing. They have this little arrow tool thing you can like move. I guess you can just grab these and make them approximately a good size. There's a stroke thing up at the top here and you can make it thicker. And there's like colors and stuff right here. So. I'm just going to do a little blue because I like blue. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than the outside of the screen. Anyway, that's good enough. What we want to do is have an image that you can slice. So these we have rounded corners and we're going to slice them so that they can stretch without distorting the image. So let's go export and it's a PNG, it's 512 by 512 and it has a transparent background. Um, you can also, in this program, we want to make a block too. So if I select this guy again and just go to the corners and make them hard and then maybe make the color a little bit lighter. This works pretty good for some bricks of ice or whatever, so I'm just going to export that to export block. This is my desktop where I've already done this stuff. <laughs> but anyway, so let's create a folder called sprites, and we made this window that we're going to bring in, and a block that we'll bring in. And since we're in 2D mode and it's a 2D project, they should already be Sprite 2D. So if they came in as a texture, you want to change that to Sprite 2D and apply. And so let's just create a UI image. And we're going to put the window box on it, onto its Sprite. And I'm going to use this tool thing up here in the top and just kind of scale it. You can see it just stretches and doesn't really look that good. So what you can do on the window box is go to Sprite Editor and then here there's these little things you can grab on the outside 
to drag them in. And this is how it's going to stretch the image. And you can also enter them right down here. So it can be like 150, 150, 150, 150. So this is going to, it's not going to stretch this outside section when it's when you drag, drag the size of the thing. So then go apply in the top here and close the window. And then on our image, instead of simple, we can go sliced. And now when we scale it, it's just only stretching the middle of that sliced section. It's also really big, so I'm actually going to go to the window and instead of pixels per unit being 100, I'm going to do 400 and press apply. So this is a pretty good kind of fit. I'm also going to select the exit button and put the window box on this guy too. I'm actually going to make its text a little darker so it's easier to see. But anyways, so this image is going to be what we're going to show our player that you choose. So I am going to Alt Shift and click in the center and I'm going to make it 380 by 215. And this image, I'm just going to call it Chosen Tank, I guess. And then right click that and make a child of it, a UI image that's inside of it. And mine's already centered, so I'll just leave that, but I'm going to make it 208 by 208. So back in an art program, so Affinity Designer for me, I I'm going to skip this part, but basically you want to make a tank that's 512 by 512 and you have a transparent background. So make sure when you create a new document you choose transparent background, 512 by 512. And so if you're going to use Affinity Designer and you don't know anything, um, these shapes here, if you were to like draw a shape, uh, pick a color like green for my tank guy. Um, so if you're going to do like a shape like this, you can just like draw it and you can make the stroke whatever size looks nice to you. And then this black arrow just moves it around. But if you click on convert to curves and then use this white arrow, now you can adjust all these little curved things and move them and you can press delete when they're selected to delete them and you can just click to add new ones wherever you want so that's how I got whatever shape that you want to make and then you can also draw with this brush tool you can set your settings up here but then you can just like draw whatever shape you want to make and then go back to that tool and like delete some of the nodes or like adjust them until they look nice. And then over in this layers thing, you can just change the order of the layers if you want something to be in front of something else. Like if you want to add a color to something, you can like make a fill thing, make sure it's not transparent or anything. So it's got like white here and then if you want you can turn off the stroke and then just like make almost the right shape and then just like adjust it after clicking convert to curves adjust it to the shape that you want and move it underneath the layer so that they're in the right order and stuff do your own thing make your own cool characters and export them as 512 by 512 with a nice thing and then don't do their 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 canon make that a separate image so like what I've done is I've like made each tank an image 
and then I've made like their cannon that they aim just like a separate thing but it's also on 512 by 512 so I just made it on a different layer and then hid everything else and exported that by itself and uh, yeah so I made four characters in total so take some time and draw a bunch of cool tank characters and then drag all those guys into unity and drag all their stupid aimer things so that they can rotate that and make sure they're all sprite 2d and so on my chosen tank I'm just gonna put my first tank guy that I drew so let's make a section where you can click on a button and choose what tank you're gonna be so on the canvas I'm gonna create a UI panel and just make this like some section underneath here and I'm gonna call it like tank selection whatever it doesn't really matter what it's called tank selection or tank selector and then right click that and go UI button and let's actually make four buttons so let's duplicate that by right clicking it and on the tank selection go add component layout and give it a grid layout group and that will like automatically do this cool thing where it just like arranges the buttons so that they fit nicely and I'm and then you can control it so over here there's like the cell size and like gaps between them and stuff like that so I'm gonna make the cell size 150 by 150 and space them out by about 10 and adjust it so that all four of them can fit and if you go back to the free aspect you can sort of check how it's centering it it's not very centered <laughs> So instead of stretch here, I'm going to do Alt Shift, Center, move it down, scale the width until it's pretty good. And let's see, so it's pretty centered. I think I'm actually going to put the, the window on the image. Maybe scale it. And on here, I'm going to see if I can center these guys. Child alignment, middle center. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then go back to 16 by 9. Alright, so if I press play here, you will notice that when you press them, they kind of just change color. Something really cool you can do. I'm actually going to delete all the buttons except the first one for now. On that first button, over here make sure it still says interactable but underneath it there's transition color tint change that to animation and then auto generate animation click that and let's just create a folder for animation and button is fine for the name so now we've got this button animator but it's automatically made for us. If you go to Window Animator and you have that selected, you can see there's it's gonna it's got this normal highlighted press disabled, and that's controlling these transitions highlighted, and it goes there and stuff. And then there's these different animation states. These are the different animations. And 
these things will be controlled by the button script, this thing right here. It's automatically going to tell it to animate. So right now all the animations don't do anything though. So if you have this button guy selected and you go window animation, uh, maybe unselected and selected again. So he's got this normal. So we want to do like when you highlight it, let's add a property. Rect transform is this thing here. So it's the like 2D UI version of a transform. Uh, so we're going to add like scale. And I'm actually going to select this keyframe and press delete. So there's only one keyframe. And open this little arrow thing. I'm going to make it like 1.2, press enter, and 1.2, press enter. So when it's highlighted, it's a little bit bigger. And then when we press it, let's go to the animation by clicking this bar and choose pressed. And do the same thing, add property, open the little arrow for rect transform, scale, select the, that other keyframe and just delete it because we just need one. You could animate like a whole timeline if you want, but I'm just going to do 0 0.9 so it's like smaller here. And then if you go back to normal, there's nothing going on. So stop it from recording. See this is red right now. Press the record button off so that's not red anymore. So automatically this should just do like a rollover thing. Let me press play. Yeah, so when you mouse over it gets bigger, you press on it gets smaller, and now that it's selected it's big. So let's, inside this button let's just right click and delete the text. And on the button let's just give it tank1 for its source image. And let's just duplicate this guy and give him tank 2. And duplicate this guy and give him the third tank. And duplicate that guy. And give him the fourth tank. So now when we press play, we got some nice kind of animating buttons. And when we click them, we want to like change that guy. We also should go to the event system right here, and it has a first selected. So by default, we want to select that first button. So I'm going to drag the first button onto here. And when we press play, it's going to automatically have that guy bigger, because it's automatically selected. And then you can also press left and right, and up, and everything. Oh, let's put the animation up on this guy too. So on this button for our exit button, you can just go where it has color tint, change it to animation. Don't auto-generate the animation. Just grab this guy, this button animator, just drop him on here. And he should automatically just share the same properties. And see, because his alignment was centered, he won't like screw up and like grow to the left or anything. See if I can do that. See, it can like grow a different way if it's centered differently. Oops. Also, these all these arrows are the, the navigation between the buttons. So if I press play and then use the arrow keys, so this guy's automatically selected. So I press the arrow keys, I press up, it's going to go up to him. And say if this was like a pop-up window or something, I wouldn't want to be able to select that maybe. So just to show you, not that it really matters for this project, but just to show you that you can do it. If you go to the button guy, this first button, there is a navigation section somewhere. Navigation here, it's automatic. So you can just like go to every button. But you can do like vertical, so now you can only go to the horizontal or yeah, vertical buttons or horizontal only. And you can see the arrows update. And I like to just go explicit 
and then if I was to press to the right I would go to this next button here and I'll just leave the other ones blank so you can only go to the right and then on this guy I would do the same thing I would go explicit if I press to the left I want to go back to the first button if I press to the right I want to go to the next one and this guy third button explicit if I press left I would go back to this button if I press right I would go to the next button and then on this guy explicit and if I press left I would go back to that guy so now they can't go anywhere else so if I press play automatically select the first one I can't go out out of them I can only go left and right so you might want to do that for certain situations alright so also when we press on these buttons we want to change that guy so what we can do is on the button it's got this click thing click plus here and let's go find this image that was right here this image and drag it on here and then go to the image and sprite so the image he has a sprite right that's not the image we want <laughs> this image he has a sprite right here so we're going to be changing that sprite so where are we this guy chosen tank image and then we just want to put this sprite onto it so then on this button add a plus thing drag that image to it go to image sprite and we want to put this second tank onto it and same thing for this guy plus image image sprite uh, purple guy and then the fourth one same thing image sprite pink tank guy so that's gonna update that image into a new sprite so now if I press play it's really going like that it's like I'm choosing my different character yo oh yeah so I'm just gonna go right click the canvas UI button and I'm just gonna call it button play and I'm gonna make it width 380 and height 85 and click on this thing and go alt shift and click on the bottom and I'm gonna move it up a little bit 63 and let's move all these guys <laughs> I'm just gonna use this tool and just like hold shift so that it goes straight get them up there and tank selection oh my goodness move it up hold shift I can always just check and make sure I'm not screwing anything up looks fine oops 16 by 9 and so inside the play button here there's a text I'm gonna make it say play make the size like 46 and like if you're making it too big it disappears so you can always like make it overflow here so that it doesn't matter how big it is I'm gonna make it a bit darker and what am I doing oh and then so there's some cool stuff you can do with the text you can actually do like less than b greater than just like html you can make it like bold so you can put like less than end thing so that's the beginning and the end of a bold text and you can also do like italic with i and you can also
Are you tired of video game reviews that just scratch the surface? Where the reviewer is rushing through what might be an epic, life-changing experience so they can write up a thousand word review, slap a number on it, and get it out the door as soon as possible? Well, check out The Nth Review and Nth Briefly. The Nth Review is a documentary style video game review series you can really sink your teeth into. Don't have 30 to 40 minutes to get your fill? Nth Briefly is here for your insightful snack size takes. Check out youtube.com slash nth review. That's youtube.com slash nth review. Youtube.com slash nth review. Like and subscribe today.